ECG criteria for diagnosis of right ventricular hypertrophy are not as commonly used as that for left ventricular hypertrophy. One of the earliest set of criteria were by Meyers et al. in 1948. Tall RVV in V1 more than 6 mm, R by S ratio more than 1 in V1, Deep S in V5 more than 10 mm, or deep as in V6 more than 3 mm were proposed by them. Some of them are still very popular. There were a few more criteria by them based on small s in V1, small s in V5, V6 and reduced R by S ratio in lateral leads which are seldom used. QR in V1 was another criteria for RVH by Mayers et al, which is considered significant even now. All of us are quite familiar with the Sokolov et al criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy. Criteria for right ventricular hypertrophy were also proposed by them in 1949. They were tall R in AVR more than 4 mm and RV1 plus S V5 or V6 more than 10.5 mm. Criteria for RVH generally have low sensitivity. Higher sensitivity is noted in congenital heart disease, while intermediate sensitivity is noted in adults with acquired heart disease and primary pulmonary hypertension. Least sensitivity is noted in chronic lung disease. Incomplete RBBB pattern in right ventricular volume overload and dominant R wave in right precordial leads in right ventricular pressure overload are well known. STT changes may be associated. Right axis deviation and prominent anterior forces in right precordial leads indicate right ventricular hypertrophy. In chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, ECG changes reflect the low diaphragm from increased lung volume. Low voltage in limb leads, rightward frontal plane QRS axis, which could also be indeterminate, rightward axis of P wave, persistent S wave in all precordial leads, and low R wave amplitude in V6 are usual.